What's up guys? You already know, it's me Kira. And today, in lieu of the newest Slippy update, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about teams. If you wanna carry anyone in teams, there are three major things you need to do. Play neutral around them, help them escape combos, and help them recover back to the stage. But teams has a lot more complexity and depth than singles. So at the end, I'm just gonna give you 16 tips for how to play teams in general. And if you wanna play teams with a dedicated teams partner, then we'll have some stuff in there for you too. Closed beta for Epiphany City is happening in two days. So if you haven't signed up at epiphanycity.com demo, by May 14th, 9 a.m. PST, you might just miss it. We'll send you a Steam key and a download link to your email at that time. All right, as always, let's start with the neutral. So in teams, you want one teammate to be the point person and one teammate to be the support. These roles can and will change often over the course of the match, but you don't want both people being on point because they'll just get in each other's way, and you don't want both people supporting because you'll lose stage control until you're both stuck in the corner. Now, notice that I didn't specifically say one person who's aggressive and one person who's defensive. This is because the point person doesn't have to rush in all the time. In fact, it's just as dumb to do that in teams as it is in singles. Sometimes the point person can take their time, sometimes they can bait the enemy into coming in first, and sometimes they just wall people out like you would in singles. However, if you specifically want to carry your teammate, in my experience, the lesser skilled person is just gonna do their moves without thinking, and you'll be the one that has to play around them. Which means more often than not, you'll be playing support. And that leads me to the number one issue I see on Slippy, which is that people want to help too much. This is honestly a great idea in theory. Everyone wants to be a good teammate and help out and do sick combos together, which is a good thing. But what actually ends up happening is you end up suffocating your teammate. The point person needs space, and there's a sweet spot for it. Of course, if you're too far away, you can't help them out when they get hit, but being too close is just as bad. The point person will feel like they can't back up, or dash dance, or wave dash back, or else they might run into your moves. And anyone playing support who sees their teammate backing up will assume they want to switch roles and try to run in, only to have both of you run in at the same time and hit each other and get hit by the opponent all at once. You also shouldn't be throwing out moves behind the point person. I know it feels like you're protecting your team and walling the opponents out, but if anyone gets hit, the most likely person to get hit by your moves is your own teammate, because they're the ones closest to you. So instead, stay back, adjust your spacing depending on where your teammate is, and don't throw out pointless moves. And most importantly, don't shoot projectiles. Don't shoot missiles, don't throw pills, and do not shoot lasers. If there was ever any proof that random Falcos don't have brains, this is it. Don't shoot lasers when your teammate is in front of you. It's one of the most common mistakes I see in teams. Even if you are trying to save your teammate, you usually want to save them by starting your own combo rather than just interrupting the opponent with one low damage attack and resetting back to neutral. Unless you're doing some awesome cool strat. So when you do decide to go in and take point, you should run past your teammate and interrupt whatever move your opponent was doing, and then you'll be in front. But more on taking point in a second. The second biggest mistake in neutral is that people are way too trigger happy and want to rush in. Maybe this is just the West Coast style talking, but I would say that most people do not prioritize avoiding damage and staying alive. They would rather rush in and help their teammate, which again, is a great mentality to have, but they lose all their patience in the meantime and end up taking unnecessary damage. You'll be amazed at how much of a difference saving even one extra stock makes. And being annoying to kill is a huge thorn in your opponent's side. It's something that does mental damage when teams realize they can't make you budge. Now, all of this is from the perspective of the support player, but what if you're playing on point? I talked about supporting first because, like I said, most people will just run in and do their moves without thinking. But if your teammate is the support and they're the one suffocating you, one good thing you can do is to attack and then hold shield. Your teammate will attack through you and hit the opponent on the other side. And if your opponent grabs, you'll get thrown out of the way, and your teammate will interrupt the attack naturally. Otherwise, if things really aren't working out, then you can just play the platforms instead. Of course, certain characters like Fox, Falco, Puff, and Sheik are much better on platforms, but any character can play on a side plat and interrupt approaches instead of forcing openings themselves. Now, once someone does go in, we have a new situation. Either your teammate will have won neutral, or your opponent will have won neutral. So, if your teammate gets hit, you have two options. One is to just stand nearby. 
If your teammate DIs away, there's no need to rush in immediately. The opponent will be scared to move past you, assuming they have any kind of awareness at all. So you can simply threaten an attack and really block them out, and your teammate only takes a small bit of damage and you guys can attempt to win neutral again. The second, like I said earlier, is to hard commit and run past your teammate. Knowing which one to pick is slightly difficult, but I would say if you either have a good sense that the opponent is about to win neutral and you know how to punish it, you can of course run in and do so. Otherwise, if your opponent's at high percent, it's relatively safe to run in, because your teammate will get hit far enough to avoid any attacks that you throw out. But what if your teammate won neutral? Well, now it's time to go off. The two ways to do this are through tech chasing and team combos. Now, what I've found is that most random teammates you find on Slippy will just continue doing their combo without thinking. Pro doubles players definitely switch off each hit because it racks up damage a lot faster and keeps them mobile in case the enemy teammate tries to interrupt them. But since we're not all pew fat, just let your teammate do their combo and then follow up when they no longer can. So what I recommend is just to pick up the tech chases. Tech chasing is the easiest and simplest thing you can do in case you're not exactly sure whether you can go in. Your team's game sense will improve over time, but for now you can just cover any tech roll towards you. Since this is all you're looking for, you're guaranteed to hit the tech chase. Not only that, but it's also a solid way to continue helping while taking zero risks or taking damage yourself. It also forces the enemy to either get up in place, which is dangerous, or roll back towards their teammate, which automatically wins stage control for your team. And also, if your teammate happens to be much better than you, this is actually one of the best ways to support them. Don't suffocate them, don't mess up their moves, just let them do their thing and cover their back, and you'll pick up all the slack. Without tech chasing, you'll just have to wait for one of three things. Wait until your point person is smart enough to hit the opponent back to you. Wait until your point person can no longer follow up a combo, either because he can't reach the enemy anymore or because he's about to get comboed himself. Or if you're positioned between the two opponents, you can just let your teammate keep comboing and wall out the other enemy instead. Since it's so much more likely for the other enemy to run in, it'll be easier to predict their approach, and you'll force them to take extra time to get through. But again, what if you're on point? Well, the best thing to do is let your teammate pick up the slack by hitting opponents back towards them. Then that opponent gets stuck between both of you, which is a horrible position, and at any time you can rush down the other enemy while your teammate keeps the one in back busy. Winning neutral in teams actually opens up so many opportunities, because either your teammate can continue a combo and the enemy teammate has to force their way in, or you two can team combo the person in the middle while walling out the enemy. It's overall just a huge advantage state to be in. All right, in a bit, I'm gonna give you a ton of tips for micro situations in teams, but first I wanna go over edge guarding. Believe it or not, edge guarding is just rarely worth it in teams. It takes a lot of time and doesn't do that much damage and leaves you open near the ledge. Remember that in teams, speed is king. You wanna rack up damage as fast as possible. Starting a team combo racks up the most damage in the least amount of time, which is way faster than edge guarding, which you probably won't even have time to finish the edge guard anyway. That means if you hit someone really far away, don't run over to set up an edge guard. Instead, look at your teammate because either they're gonna start a combo that you can help with or they will get comboed and you can save them and start your own combo. Secondly, if you ever do get the opportunity to edge guard, there's two ways to do it. The simplest way is to have one person grab the ledge and one person cover the stage. This works best if the enemy is far away from the stage. Now, you can either take the character with the strongest moves and put them on stage or you can take the character who's best on the ledge and have them grab the ledge. There's a lot of combinations, so it really depends, but one example is for Sheik Fox. You want the Sheik to take ledge because her back air is OP, and you want the Fox to stay on stage in case he can get an up smash. Also, right when the enemy is about to land on stage, the person on the ledge should roll up. This gives them invincibility and avoids any attack that their teammate will throw out. The other way to edge guard is to have one person just jump way out there, and the other teammate will protect the stage slash ledge. While the last edge guard method works if the opponent is really far away, this one works if your opponent just got hit off stage and you could potentially follow that up. An example here is if you have a Puff slash Falco team. The Jigglypuff can always go way out there to cover as much as she can. A Fox either has to up B high, which gets them killed by Puff, he can try to side B to ledge, which gets edge hogged or down smashed by Falco, or he can up B low, which gets beaten by almost anything. All right, that was most of the general stuff about teams. So now here are just a ton of specific tips. In general, when recovering, you want to up B high on stage whenever possible. 
In singles, going to the ledge is more viable because people want to stay on stage rather than risking going to the ledge. But in teams, you'll eventually make it back no matter what due to the chaos. Go high and far on stage as possible, DI really well, and you'll stay alive a lot longer without risking a low percent death. Also on that note, don't give up if you're off stage. Up B into Falco lasers, get closer for a peach or puff to save you, Sheik might even throw needles, you might as well try because you never know what might happen. Enemies are forced off the ledge all the time, and you might get back even when you thought it was impossible. A good way to save people from kill moves is to throw out weak moves above them. Fox's down air, Puff's down air, Sheik needles, Falco lasers, you can use anything, it'll just offset the trajectory and keep your teammates safe. A good way to help teammates recover is the same, except now you can also jab. Falcon, Sheik, and Marth specifically benefit from this because their recoveries can usually get them on stage, but not without suffering a ton of lag. Jabbing a Sheik immediately actually makes their recovery OPF, and your opponents will feel that pressure that I talked about earlier of not being able to kill you. However, if you're a character like Falcon or Fox, you might not want to go off stage to save someone at all. The only ways they can save people is by jumping way off and hitting their teammate back into the stage, or using their up B, which leaves them super edge guardable. In this case, percents are everything. If you're at high percent and your teammate is at very low percent, then by all means, it might be worth it to go for it. But if they're about to die anyway and you're at zero, just save your stock and wait for them to respawn. In 2v1s, prioritize using shield over anything else. Like I said before, grabs and teams take a really long time and are very easy to interrupt. So either the enemy will never be able to hit you, or they try to grab you and get grabbed in return. When going for grab combos, remember that the opponent will take much less knockback than normal. Keep this in mind when looking at the opponent's percent. When your puff teammate is going for a grab rest, don't pummel. It'll hit the puff and mess everything up. Only pummel if the Jigglypuff is far away and can't get there in time, but stop when she gets close. For certain characters like Sheik or Peach, their normal down throws or up throws can take a long time to capitalize on if people are nearby. Instead, just toss an enemy towards the chaos and push everyone back into the fray. They'll naturally take damage for free. If you've grabbed an opponent but their teammate is waiting to punish you, don't throw right away. Just hold them until their teammate starts to run in and then throw. You get invincibility at the start of your throw, and you'll keep both of them busy so your own teammate can help you out. If you're the teammate waiting for a grab to happen, run up shield. You running forward will make them try to get invincibility, but you'll block the hit and get a free attack yourself. There is an ideal positioning for teams. Besides the position where both opponents are literally both trying to recover, you generally want to be between both opponents. More explanation in this video. In general, people are more likely to attack and throw out moves in teams because they feel like they have less space and they feel like they need to be proactive. Which is true, since time and speed is more important in teams. At lower levels though, you can capitalize on this by just waiting for standard approaches and punishing them. Tired of hearing nice back air? Well, it's only more true in teams. The difficulty of starting long combos means that fast moves with big hitboxes are king. So if you're having trouble winning neutral, spam back air. Okay, that's a lot. This was a huge video with a ton of info, so I apologize if all the clips weren't perfectly timed. If people are really enjoying teams, I'll do more videos on the types of team comps, solid game plans and strategies for each team comp, and maybe add a tier list later on. Not even just for characters, but also for specific players. Some of the coolest, hypest sets in history have been in teams, and team synergy has overcome single skill countless times. It's a huge part of Melee's crazy deep lore, so Practice up with a friend, and I'll see you next time.